Buckle up, guys. We have a lot to talk about today, and you are not going to want to miss it. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for the support. On my channel, I like to give my opinion and perspective on things that are happening today, things that I think actually matter to everyday people, especially those of us trying to raise kids in the insanity known as today's society. Mostly what I talk about are current events and politics and just anything going on that I think needs another opinion. So please like this video, leave your thoughts on this topic in the comments below and share it with others. Help me to grow this channel so I can hopefully reach more people that value logic, reason, and sanity. Also be sure to head on over to Rumble and find me there under Outspoken Samantha in the event that YouTube decides I have violated their communist, I mean, community standards and chooses to kick me off their platform forever. That being said, let's get into today's topic. The more that I see of gender ideology, the more that I look into it, trying to find any redeeming quality as to why we would be teaching these things to children, I have yet to find any reason why we should be confusing children this way. And not only that, I continue to find more reasons and more proof that this is really a very manipulative and self-interest centered movement. And what we're also seeing is that there is literally nobody who is above abusing children, nobody who is above using their power to further their own popularity, to earn money, to gain attention, to gain praise, to appear as though they are more accepting of modern ideas and whatever those modern ideas are. And it's insane that any one of these motives or combination of them would drive a parent to abuse and exploit their own children, but we are seeing this over and over and over again. And it is probably the saddest thing and the most tragic thing that we could possibly be doing to kids. And it is happening on such a wide scale. And a perfect example of all of this is Jazz Jennings. Jazz is one of the most well-known trans transgender figures in the public eye. Uh, from what we know, Jazz was born a biological boy, and I think around the age of two or three, Jazz had a dream that he was a girl. And this is essentially what kicked off this entire thing where his parents changed the trajectory of his life and just took this to mean that they really had a daughter born, born in a boy's body. So from that time, I believe that he was really truly socially transitioned around the age of five and then started on things like puberty blockers and hormones at a very early age as well. Not exactly sure when, but then I think that they started to document his life around the age of 15 because they kicked off um, a documentary and then this reality TV series around the age of 15. So in that time, Jazz has also co-authored a book called I Am Jazz. Um, he wrote a memoir called Being Jazz, My Life as a Transgender Teen, and he's also done voice work for animated trans characters and has been part of you know num numerous other things like short films and all of these have similar themes around this transgender identity and of course today the reality show is still going on so it's important to note that everybody in jazz's life the his parents the producers the authors they all have this vested interest in making sure that jazz continues with this identity and you can be mad at me for <laughs> insinuating that their intentions are not truly rooted in the well-being of this child, but generally actions speak louder than words and what they're doing makes a solid case for having questionable motives. Um, I've never really watched Jazz's show. I've never really paid that much attention to it, but recently a few clips have come to light and unfortunately for Jazz, what we're seeing is a continued confirmation that every concern that us transphobic people seem to have about this entire ideology is true, including the belief that this is an entirely predatory movement. We're going to watch a couple of clips from this show. This first one is about 60 seconds long, and it's this emotional ex exchange between Jazz and his mom. So, um, are you feeling like you wanted to start talking about... Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm going to cry. But you know I can't get out of my head. I know. No, listen. <laughs> I it know. just doesn't stop. It's okay. Give me a hug. It's okay. I know what you're going through. We've been there before. No, it still doesn't stop now. I and know. I'm already going well, back to negative. You're, but you're, the more you're talking about yourself, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. You're digging in and you're, it's making you put a, a magnifying glass on what's mm -hmm. already difficult as it is. So this is hard for you. I know. And you don't, we don't want to push you. I know. Anymore. I'm the one doing it. Like I know. You're your own worst enemy. 
I feel kind of all over the place and like my mind is very cluttered and not clear. And I really want to have that clarity. I really want to understand myself and be able to read my own soul and what I want. And it's just very challenging. And I think I'm kind of breaking down a little bit and spiraling into negativity. I just want to feel like myself. Like, that's right. it. You're, I don't like care. All I want is to be happy and feel like me. And I don't feel like what me ever. Me? So first you can see, you know, Jazz is having this emotional breakdown it seems like you know he's crying he's, he's trying to express something to his mom and i'm not saying he to be disrespectful of, of jazz it's out of this desire out of this goal to re-ground our kids in reality that you know we've got to understand who is truly making the decisions for these children and out of respect for them i think that we need to acknowledge them from the place before they were manipulated into doing these things so i think it is more respectful to jazz to call her a he because i want to acknowledge to him that it is okay if he chooses to go back to his original identity. So we can see again that, you know, he's trying to have this emo this emotional moment and trying to express this distress that he's in. And his mom immediately says, don't cry. Like, don't show emotion. And you can see Jazz sit back. Like, this is not the first time that he's heard this. And it's almost like this, this, this instinctual reaction, this habitual reaction. And I don't think that this mom is trying to protect jazz from his own emotions i think she's trying to protect herself from his emotions because the second that she allows those floodgates to open the more vulnerable that she is to the wrath of her child for this grown adult child who is now old enough to understand the gravity of what has been happening over the last 20 years and realizing that if he does come to the realization that none of these choices were his own it's going to rest on her shoulders because she is the one who changed the ent entire uh, path for his life based on this dream as a toddler and he and jazz is going to realize how ridiculous and, an, and insane it was to allow a two or three year old to make that kind of commitment at that age and as a parent to allow your child to do that. I really think that she is just acting in her own self-interest because she does not want to have to face the reality of the choices that she has made on behalf of her child. And then she says, I know what you're going through, which almost put my blood pressure through the roof because no, you do not. You have absolutely no idea what your child is experiencing right now with this completely separate human being is you have allowed your body to develop naturally. Your body and mind are not completely disconnected from each other. You haven't had any of your perfectly healthy body parts chopped off. You had the opportunity to make choices about your life and whether or not you wanted to conceive and carry your own children and about who you wanted to have relationships with and how you wanted to present yourself. You have had to make zero sacrifices of yourself, your health and your well-being and your bodily function. So you cannot possibly understand the stress that Jazz is feeling right now. And not only is she trying to keep Jazz from expressing these feelings, she's actually manipulating him into keeping them to himself by saying it's harmful to keep dwelling on it and talking about it. And then when Jazz says, I know that I'm doing this to myself, the mom is only too quick to jump on this. Oh yeah, you're your own worst enemy. This is totally on you. Like she's placing all of the blame on on jazz when this mom says you're your own worst enemy i disagree mom you are jazz's own worst enemy you you're the one who did this and jazz is literally trying to say i don't feel like myself i don't have any clarity i feel so confused i feel i i just want to feel connected to my own soul i want to have that clarity about who i am and she at every turn is trying to shut that down because again i think that she doesn't want to face the role that she has played in getting her child to this place that all of these changes and all of this damage cannot be reversed. What Jazz is going through right now is exactly what trans activists will tell you is not going to happen. And what Jazz's mom is showing is the absolute desperation to keep up the facade. Ask me why I used to be a boy and now I'm a girl. I would say that I have a girl brain and boy body and I think like a girl, but I, but I just have a boy body and it's different than you. Is it okay to be different? Yes. You like it? Because mm -hmm. why? It's okay to be different. It's okay to be different because it just matters who you are. It doesn't matter if you're different than anybody else. It just matters if 
you're having a good time and you like who you are. So first you have this little, little kid saying, I have a girl's brain inside of a boy's body. And you're looking at this child and you're going, you have absolutely no idea what that even means. And everything that is happening in this conversation sounds like coaching, 100% coaching. Secondly, every child is different. Every single child. No two children are the same. And that is a great thing. We, we want our children to recognize that everybody is different because that is how you learn to be accepting of other people, to recognize that everybody thinks and feels differently. And you learn kind of how to navigate through life as you interact with different personalities and you appreciate the differences that we have. But thinking that you need to take, you know, to take this extreme these extreme steps to prove that you can successfully raise a child that's more different than any other child. It's like the new transgender mom is like what the old soccer mom was. You know, like when you have all of these moms who have their kids on the field and everybody is screaming for their child to get more attention or to be in the spotlight or to be the lead player. Now you have all of these moms competing with each other to see whose kid is the most different and the most trans transgender and who realized it at the youngest age. It's like, well, my kid was five when they knew it. And it's like, yeah, well, my kid was two. And then you have like this, this, the ultimate soccer mom or the ultimate transgender mom coming and being like, well, I knew it from our eight week ultrasound. Like, you know, my, my little jelly bean in the womb waved a pride flag. But there are a couple of much more dire and deeper and more disgusting issues going on here. It's the fact that Jazz has to use a dilator forever for his entire life. But with her, I'm worried about like her mental well-being and her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. That, that is a be. concern. We you don't have that watchful eye, they tend to go back to old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. But Jazz is bad, even when I'm home once a day. I will be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I wring her neck. Can you imagine? No, I can't. And I don't want to get too graphic about what the surgery procedure looks like from turning a boy part into a girl part. But essentially, you know, they take the, the penis, they peel away the skin and kind of remove the muscle, and then they invert it into this hole. And it's not anything like what, you know, you would have if you were biologically born a female, but they just create this hole that then your body spends your entire life trying to close. It's like a wound to your body. So you have to use this tool to keep it open. You do not have a choice and you have to do it every single day. And not only that, you have to use this lubricant because the area gets very, very dry. And this is from numerous testimony that I have heard from people who have actually had this type of surgery. It is consistent across the board. There is no escaping it. It's interesting because when these self-obsessed, trans-obsessed, woke idiot parents, counselors, teachers, doctors, whoever it is, say that a child can make informed consent, uh, It's even is it even remotely possible for a child to understand that this is what they're signing up to do for the rest of their lives, that this is what they are signing up to engage in? And not only that, <laughs> To have, you know, a mom that says, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it for you. Like, how violating is that? And honestly, it gets worse. For you. Jazz has had a very difficult surgical course. She had a very incredible first surgery. It went seemingly very well, but there were problems. And that prompted a second surgery, which I was not a part of, unfortunately. You don't have the experience of having said we've done 50 of these. I was just not expecting her to have a complication as severe as what she did have. Marcy is a was a biological male, born a male, who was living as a female. And Marcy is also the president of an organization called WPATH, which stands for World Professional Association for Transgender Health. WPATH is the leading organization that sets the age recommendations for kids to go on puberty block blockers and hormones and to get surgeries like double mastectomies and hysterectomies and phalloplasties. And a phalloplasty is in which a surgical, it's the surgical creation of a non-functioning penis and on a biological woman. So. In September, WPATH released new standards of care for transgender youth, also known as SOC8, lowering the age of drugs and hormones from 14 to age 9, and then removing all recommendations for these surgeries. And if that's not bad enough, 
It's been discovered that several of the panel members, including Marcy Bowers herself, have been involved in a website called the Eunuch Archives, uh, which is an online forum that contains over 10,000 pornographic stories involving children. And these stories include sadomasochistic themes like child rape, torture, and castration. So the people that are setting the policies for transgender care for little kids making decisions about their sexual health and their reproductive organs are people that are involved in a fetish site centered on the abuse and the fantasy of mutilating children's reproductive organs. I will link the uh, I will link the article in the description box below. So as I said, we continue to see that every single aspect of transgender ideology and the motives behind it are purely self-interest, whether it be doctors that are earning money, whether it be parents that are, you know, that are so vested in, you know, keeping up this identity, keeping up this lie, keeping up the things that they impose on their children, whether it be for praise or financial gain or for attention or whatever it is, there is nobody that is pushing this on children that really has children's best interests at heart. And this goes all the way back to the 1960s when the Reimer family brought their twin boys to John Money. And John Money was a doctor who had his own ideas about gender identity, believing that gender was fluid and all the things that we hear today. And one of the twin boys had a botched circumcision. So the, the doctor convinced these parents just to raise him as a girl and they would never know the difference. The care throughout these children's lives involved annual checkups with Dr. Money, and that included care such as having the boys act out sexual activities that might be carried out through a husband and wife and, and actually taking pornographic pictures of these boys. So this is just as motivated by predatory ideas as it was 60 years ago. Any parent that is putting their son in a dress or their daughter that they just allowed to get a double mastectomy, Jazz is a mild version of what this the future looks like for your child. Eventually, they will get to a place that they're confused and they know that something isn't right. They will get to a place where they don't understand why their mind is not connect connected to their body. You are in for an exhausting lifelong fight as you try to convince your child not to dwell on it, to hold in their tears, to move on, and that it's all in their head. And you absolutely should be terrified of the day when you wake up and your child realizes the role that you played and that not only did you not stop it, that you encouraged it. You are in for a day when you wake up and realize that all of the likes and the praise and the attention that you got in participating in this thing that you bought as love and acceptance was a total lie and that the love and acceptance that really mattered never happened. happened, And that was your child learning to love and accept themselves. And you're going to realize that you fed your child to an ideology that was was led and run by predators. And instead of listening to people who tried to warn you about it, you were too busy calling us transphobic and hateful. And I would warn parents against looking at people like Dylan Mulvaney because Dylan Mulvaney is not a realistic example of what is happening to kids and what they are truly going to experience. He lives in this delusional little bubble where he dances around in dresses and he portrays this idea of transgender identity, that it is this utopia, that it is this thing that's going to bring you true joy and happiness. And he is the most dangerous aspect of this because he is selling something that is not real and the opposite, the, the extreme opposite of total devastation and self-loathing is the reality. I hope and pray that Jazz finds peace. I really do. And I hope all of these kids that are questioning who they are, I hope they learn to love their bodies and their identity without engaging in any of these devastating drugs or these ir irreversible surgeries. Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Please share this video. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I will leave the articles that I referenced in the description box below and we will continue to talk about this subject because it's, like I said, it is the most devastating thing that is happening to kids today and we need to not get tired of hearing about it. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.